Germany rejected Ukraine's NATO membership in the coming future. German officials say they should avoid a new conflict with Russia. The German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius refused to make an immediate decision on Ukraine's NATO membership, which Kiev is seeking. Pistorius stated that while the door is not completely closed, it is not the right time to make a final decision. Ukraine is cognizant of the current decision-making situation, according to him. He emphasized that the decision regarding Ukraine's membership in the alliance should be based on more than just solidarity, and he urged for a rational decision-making process that also considers passionate consideration. The discussion of Ukraine's potential NATO or European Union membership may not be on the same agenda for upcoming programs, according to recent statements. German Defense Minister made his statement after the recent visit of NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg to Ukraine. During the visit, Stoltenberg invited Ukrainian President Zelensky to the NATO summit in Lithuania in July, where Ukraine's NATO membership bid and security guarantees will be among the key topics for discussion. Ahead of a meeting of Western Defense Ministers to discuss providing additional military assistance to Kiev, NATO Chief Stoltenberg stated that all member countries have concurred that Ukraine will ultimately join the transatlantic military alliance once the conflict has been resolved. Maria Zakharova, the spokeswoman for the Russian Foreign Ministry in Moscow, stated that NATO's aim was to defeat Russia and that the alliance was maintaining Ukrainian motivation by offering membership after the war ends. She referred such statements as short-sighted, adding that they could result in ultimate disintegration of the European security structure. Additional declarations regarding weaponry and support were made after the summit held in Germany. However, Stoltenberg also expressed optimism about Ukraine's future prospects for joining NATO. He stated, all NATO allies have concurred that Ukraine will finally become a member. President Zelensky has a clear expectation and we have discussed this. For quite some time, Kiev has insisted on NATO membership, which entails a pledge from all member countries to defend one another in the event of an attack. The conflict with Russia that began in 2014 has added to the reluctance of NATO members to allow Ukraine immediate membership. Previously, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz stated that Germany is committed to supporting Ukraine in any way possible while also seeking to prevent a potential war between Russia and NATO. He emphasized that the decisions were made in close cooperation with the Allies and intended to aid Ukraine in its self-defense position. Zelensky is set to attend NATO's annual summit in Lithuania in July, but Ukrainian officials have made it clear that they expect NATO to agree on a roadmap for membership as a condition for Zelensky's attendance. Ukraine applied for accelerated membership in September 2020. During his visit to Kiev, Stoltenberg expressed NATO's commitment to support Ukraine and ensure its success in the conflict. What we do know is that uh... Our support helps Ukraine move, uh, to move toward uh, 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 the EU Atlantic integration. This stance implies that NATO is open to advancing Ukraine's case for joining the alliance. Following the NATO summit, US Defense Secretary Austin expressed that Ukraine's most immediate need is for an air defense capability to protect its citizens, infrastructure, and frontline forces. The remarks made by the U.S. Defense Secretary were in line with a warning from a leaked Pentagon document, which indicated that Ukraine's stockpile for missiles for its S-200 air defense systems, which provide protection to cities and infrastructure, was running low.
Ukraine's Defense Minister Oleski Reznikov expressed gratitude for the donations made by the NATO member countries and other Western countries, stating that his country is already a part of the Alliance security space. He further expressed his hope that this would accelerate Ukraine's full integration into NATO. Ukraine's government expressed dissatisfaction with the European Union's failure to provide urgently needed ammunition. To address Ukraine's dwindling ammunition stocks, EU ministers have committed to providing 2 billion euros worth of ammunition. The EU is spending 1 billion euros to reimburse member states for sending ammunition from their supplies, a process that is currently underway. Additionally, the EU has pledged to jointly purchase a further 1 billion euros of shells for Ukraine from arms manufacturers in the EU and Norway. Translating this political agreement into a legally binding text has hit a snag with parties insisting that all components of the 155mm shells should come from EU suppliers. This possesses a challenge for EU companies that use non-EU suppliers in their production process. In addition to discussing Ukraine's NATO membership, President Zelensky also raised the issue of weapon delivery with NATO chief Jan Stoltenberg. Zelensky urged NATO countries to help Ukraine to acquire long-range weapons, modern aviation, artillery, and armored vehicles, and he expressed his frustration over what he described as our partner's silence on the matter. It is not clear what Stoltenberg's response was to Zelensky's request. Germany, Poland, and Ukraine have announced plans to establish a hub for repairing Leopard tanks used by Ukraine. Additionally, Canada has pledged to provide 39 million USD in lethal aid, including sniper rifles and radios, to support Ukraine in its conflict with Russia. It seems that Germany will remain reluctant to accept Ukraine as a member to NATO.